everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Kira Murray. I work in projects and operations at Muckrock. Um, and one of the things that Muckrock does is help people file public records requests and FOIA requests. So today um, we are doing um, a presentation on some of the foundations of FOIA requesting. Um, and this presentation is organized in part um, with the Society of Professional Journalists, New England. So you may have heard a little bit about FOIA before. Um, today we're gonna we're gonna dive in and go over some of the basics on how to write your request um, and how to use Muckrock to help you track and organize requests as well. So the Freedom of Information Act or FOIA is the federal law that allows um, public access to government records. It was signed into law in 1966. Um, in 1974, um, the Privacy Act was added, which expanded access um, to people's own records. Um, and it allows access to files um, with the exception of nine major exemptions that agencies um, can use to deny the release of files and records. Those exemptions um, tend to have to do with national security and defense, with trade secrets, with personal information and things like that. So an agency could also release a document um, partially and have part of the text visible. Um, but if there are sections or lines or even words that fall under one of these exemptions, those will be redacted out of the document. Each state also has its own public records law. Um, so if you're dealing with an agency at the local or county, city, or state level, they are subject to their own state's law rather than FOIA. Um, so these laws are generally modeled on the federal FOIA, um, but they do vary from state to state. Um, local requests tend to have a bit of a faster turnaround time than federal requests, but they come with their own sets of challenges as well. Um, some states restrict access um, to filing requests, so in a handful, you need to be a resident in that state to request there. Some have age restrictions, so you need to be over 18. Some states don't allow um, people who are incarcerated to file requests, so again, they're different from state to state, and some states are more transparent than others. So what are these public records that we're talking about and how and why do we have such broad access to them? So um, this is a quote that I pulled from one of our other FOIA resources. Um, the federal FOIA and state public records laws start from the assumption that how the government conducts itself is the people's business. They operate on the belief that every action executed and every artifact created belongs to the people. Each state has public records definition. Each state has a public records definition it works with, and usually the definition of public records is expanded to encompass almost everything a government worker or government dollars touch. So I wanted to include this because I think it's a great explanation, but I also think it's a really important sentiment to keep in the back of your mind while you're filing um, requests that you are empowered with this right, and these records belong to the people and they belong to the public. So. Even though you don't have to be in this country to file, as somebody who is in this country, who is participating in democracy, who has a vested interest in how the government is operating, how it's spending money, um, and someone who is impacted by the government, these records are yours. Um, so this covers a lot of material. Um, some things that you can request are reports, agendas, court records, policies, training manuals, meeting minutes, emails, contracts, audio, video data, metadata, texts, um, the list goes on. So it's so much that we have access to. FOIA can have a reputation for being difficult. Um, it can sometimes seem inaccessible or mysterious, or like maybe you need a lawyer or you need to be a lawyer um, to be able to file a request correctly. Um, some people have had experiences or interactions with government that make them skeptical um, that, you know, they will get their desired outcome out of a request. Um, it can be difficult to navigate the layers of bureaucracy at agencies um, and to even know um, where to file the request in the first place. So these are all very valid concerns. Um, and that is where Muckrock can come in. So Muckrock was founded in 2010 to help people file and track their public records requests. 
Um, we also host and share those records requests and the responsive documents that they result in. So it acts as um, a permanent repository and database of the records and of those documents. So um, maybe somebody has already filed a request for the information that you're interested in, um, and you'll be able to find it on Muckrock and not have to make the request again. Um, so we want to expand that access to materials that have already been released. <clears throat> A lot of our users are journalists and researchers um, and activists and people who are using FOIA in a professional or an academic capacity, um, but it's open to anyone who wants to file. So we also have users who are active in their communities or who want to understand their local government better. Um, so we absolutely welcome that and we want to expand, again, access to this right that everybody has. So. On Muckrock, we have helped file over 117,000 requests, um, and that has resulted in the release of over 8 million pages of documents. And we also have a database of 22,000 agencies of 22,000 government agencies um, at the local, state, and federal levels. Um, so we have their FOIA contact information, and we also have data on um, their response rates and their response times, um, and that database is always growing as we add more. Um, so this is what it looks like. You can see that there are some recently completed requests, um, and on every page we have this blue file a request button. So if you want to make a request, you just click that, and it takes you to a form. So all the requester needs to do is add the title, add the agency or the multiple agencies that they want to request from. Um, when it's in our database, we'll pull in their contact information. If it's not already in our database, you can still add it and we'll find it and add it. Um, and then this gray area is um, the request. So you can see a FOIA request is essentially a letter to the agency. So you have your greeting and your signature. And in between that is the description of the records that you're seeking. Um, so in the gray areas, we have added some standard language that we have found is either necessary or is helpful to have in the initial request. Um, and then in the white part, um, you can just type in a description of the documents that you're looking for. Um, and then you can hit send and we direct it to where it needs to go. So before you file, um, I actually recommend looking in a few places to see if maybe what you're looking for has already been released or is already published somewhere. So the agency's own website is actually a pretty good resource. Um, sometimes they have vaults or databases of released documents or frequently requested documents um, or things that they regularly proactively publish. Um, Muckrock is also another location that you can check. Again, maybe someone has already filed for what you're looking for and that request is already in progress. Um, Document Cloud, um, which is documentcloud.org, is um, another site that we host where um, journalists and again researchers, um, people using FOIA can upload their documents. Um, and a lot of the material on Document Cloud is also public, so that is another place to check. You can also um, do Google searches for documents. So you can search for slideshows or PDFs um, or spreadsheets. So always worth taking a look um, before you file. When you're ready to file your request, um, here are some things to include. So start with a citation of the law. Um, so pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act or whatever state you're filing in, um, Muckrock will do this automatically if you file on the platform because every agency is tied to a jurisdiction so it knows what state you're filing in and it will um, cite the correct law. Um, you do need a name or a description of the document. So the laws do not require agencies to answer questions um, or create new documents. So you do need to be requesting things that already exist. And if you don't know the specific name, um, you want to um, be as descriptive as possible. You also want to include, include search parameters, so a date range, keywords, things like that. Depending on what you're requesting, um, it can be very easy for um, the results to you know, get really out of scope, um, especially if there's a lot of data being pulled. Um, so you do want to um, narrow it down to specifically what you're looking for, otherwise um, the request can become overly broad. Um, so those three 
definitely should be included in your request. These next two are a little bit case by case um, and can maybe use a little bit of your judgment um, depending on what you're requesting. Um, so it's possible to reference um, the docu reference the document um, in media or other supporting evidence of how you know that document exists. So if you read a news article that said, you know, this agency generates this report, you can point to that, you know, as sort of proof that you know that this agency has this document. Um, if you are requesting files, say, with the FBI on a deceased individual, um, you're going to need proof of death. So you're going to need an obituary, a news article, or something like that. Um, so any supporting documentation, and again, I think I would only include this if you think that it um, serves your request and is, and is necessary. Um, otherwise, um, I don't think you need anything extra. And this last one, any relevant information about yourself as the requester. So you're not required to tell the agency who you are or why you're requesting, but especially for journalists um, or people working in the media, um, this can come up because when it comes to like fee categories, um, so there may be opportunities for you to be able to share, you know, that you are requesting these records in the public interest um, or in a news gathering effort and not for a commercial reason or an enterprise reason. Um, and that might put you in a different fee category. Um, so again, we'll get a little bit more into that, um, but I would definitely take these last two, um, a little bit of a grain of salt. They're not necessary, but could be helpful in your request. Um, I think too, um, writing out your request and describing your documents, sometimes it is a little bit more of an art than a science. You know, you want to be specific, but not too specific that you're limiting the results that you could get. Um, I think this is a good opportunity to use those journalism skills, you know, in being precise and being thorough, but being succinct. So requests should not <clears throat> cite every possible law other than the records law um, that they're filing under, um, include like unnecessary arguments or backgrounds um, or extra information. Again, I think it should be succinct and to the point of what you're requesting. Um, bury the request in legalese and forget that there's a human um, on the other side of the process. Um, and I'll get into a little bit um, more of that in a few minutes. So I wanted to um, go over a few examples of requests that have been filed by Muckrock staff. Um, this is a combination of some serious requests and some that are a little more fun or interesting. Um, so this one um, by Mitchell, who is our CTO. Um, so Mitch learned that um, the CIA was using board games um, as part of their training programs. Um, so he filed a request um, for materials related to that board game. So including but not limited to boards, cards, and rule books, including the game itself, um, this game collection deck. So you can see um, it referenced the federal um, FOIA because the CIA is a federal agency, described the records, and then had a note about um, what kind of requester he is. So he's not a commercial requester um, in some of this other um, muckrock language. Um, and he did get materials back for this one. Um, it is pretty funny because he got the board game, but a lot of the game itself was redacted because it um, featured, you know, real, um, you know, security information used to train um, people in the CIA. Um, so that was an interesting um, request. Um, this one um, was filed um, by Andre um, with the Wake County School System in North Carolina um, for information related to their HVAC systems. Um, so this was part of a larger request effort. Um, this is one request, but it was also filed with, with other county school systems um, in a reporting effort um, to investigate air quality in schools. So this one references the North Carolina public records law. And then these four lines are the documents that were being requested. Um, and you can see that there's some more text in this one than there was in the last one where um, Andre had opted to describe a little bit about the journalism project, the motivation behind the request, um, and why um, it was in the public interest. Um, so that is an option as well um, to include in your language. And then this one um, filed by my colleague, Adrian. Um, this is another funny story. So Adrian read an article about 
a peacock that was loose in um, an Oakland neighborhood and was terrorizing everyone in the community. Um, but in that article, um, there was a photo of a flyer that was taped to a telephone pole that said, if you have any complaints or comments about this peacock, send them to this address, this S Vasquez at oaklandca.gov. Um, so Adrian said, I want all of those emails that were sent to that email address. So um, you can see he has his search parameters. So from this date range um, containing the keyword peacock um, sent to this um, email address. Um, so I thought this was a funny example and kind of a good lesson of being creative and how you might think about what you can request. Um, so be thinking about um, like in government agencies, who's talking to each other or what government agencies are interacting with maybe private companies or with private universities and, you know, who's going to a press conference and saying, you know, I have a pile of reports on my desk. So things like that, we can learn about documents and we can learn about, you know, how information is flowing around in agencies um, in interesting ways. So once you have written out and filed your request with the government agency, the next step while you're waiting for them to respond is to follow through. And there are some ways that you can do that. So I think the first one um, that I would encourage is to assume good faith in the process. And this kind of ties back into remembering that there's a person on the other side of your request. So um, FOIA officers and people who are working in records departments are usually working, you know, within those layers of bureaucracy, they're probably having to hop around to different departments and different people to gather the information that you're looking for. Um, government agencies have, you know, all the same challenges of resourcing and staffing and turnover um, that, you know, everywhere else has. Um, and sometimes a little bit of communication with a records officer can go a long way. They don't always um, opt to talk with you, um, but when they do, it can be really helpful to learn maybe more about how their records, you know, are structured or maybe you can clarify or narrow down your request to really target what you're looking for so that they're not looking for extra things for you. So having that open line of communication and approaching it collaboratively, if the agency you know, is participating can actually be really helpful for your request. Um, I'd also cite the deadline. So MuckRock will do this automatically, but agencies um, do have required timeframes that they have to communicate with you. So it's usually a few days um, that they have to at least acknowledge your request and tell you that it's being processed. And then a little bit of a longer time for them to actually um, produce the records. Um, so definitely stay on top of um, those deadlines and, and be aware of you know, what the agency is required to do in that time frame. Um, I also recommend following up, asking for status updates if you haven't heard from the agency and staying on top of you know, those deadlines and delays and clarifications. Um, this is something that MuckRock also does automatically. Um, so if an agency is not responding, we'll automatically ping them um, and say, you know, can we, can we have an update on this request? Um, another one is get estimated completion dates and get information like this in writing as well um, on your request wherever possible. So if an agency is saying that they're delayed, um, you know, they have a circumstance that's, you know, preventing them from providing the records um, in the time that you expected. Make sure you find out what that new date is so that you can continue following up and get that new date in writing, you know, so that you have the record of how this request is progressing um, and you can, you know, take an action if you need to. Um, and then finally, um, there may be an appeal option. Some states um, do have an administrative appeals process for um, wrongful denials or long delays um, that will require them to do another search or have another party, um, you know, inspect their response um, for, for accuracy. So some other things to expect <clears throat> during the request process. So one is clarifications. Um, an agency might ask you follow-up questions um, to be able to process your request correctly. Um, so be aware if there's anything that you need to respond to. 
um, if they ask you a clarifying question and um, you don't respond, um, there's a risk for you know that that request stalling or being closed out. Um, so that is something to be aware of that, especially in the very beginning of the request, they might ask you a follow up question. Um, fees agencies um, might charge fees for your request, depending on what you're requesting, the scope, the labor involved in producing those records. Um, delays delays happen um, in FOIA. Um, I recommend looking at Muckrock too for average response times of agencies, and that can kind of give you a good idea of what's normal, um, what's abnormal. Um, and then the final outcomes of the request. So your request is most likely going to end in like one of three ways. Um, so you'll either get um, a full release of the documents or a partial release of the documents. Um, you might get a denial or a rejection due to one of those exemptions. Um, or a claim that the agency does not have the records. Um, and that can mean either that the records don't exist or um, it's a different agency that actually has them and you should forward your request elsewhere. Um, and then transparency, every request filed in good faith has value. Um, filing the request in the first place shows a public interest and a demand for those records and an interest in participating in this FOIA process and acting on this right that we have. Um, releases of documents provide you and everyone else with the information. And even rejections and other obstacles are important. Um, they are data about how that agency is operating and behaving um, and their opportunities to push for improvements and change. And for that reason, we always say always be filing. Um, and some resources um, that you can check out again, um, Muckrock, you can look at existing requests for inspiration. Um, if you see a request that you think looks interesting in one location and you think, you know, I want to find out that information in my own town or in my own city, you can go ahead and file that request. Um, info at muckrock.com is our general support email for questions. Um, and muckrock.com slash place um, has data on each state's records laws and also the outcomes of requests that we've seen in all those locations. Um, and we've been collecting that data um, for over 10 years. So there's a lot of really interesting stuff there too. And that is it. So thank you so much. Again, if you have any questions, please email us um, and happy filing.